Hey, I'm Winston, and I like to steal other people's ideas. In this week's video, I'm going to make some hex-shaped drink coasters with a CNC twist. A couple weeks ago, I saw a video by I Like To Make Stuff where he made some simple magnetic drink coasters, and I thought, hmm, that's kind of neat. I wish you could snap them together in any orientation, though. Then, I saw Veritasium's behind-the-scenes video about his Snatums Kickstarter where he explained how the engineering team got atomic models to stick together in any configuration and combination. The secret was the use of spherical magnets. By allowing the magnets to freely rotate, each Snatum would always be able to pair up with another one. This technique isn't new by any means, but it was the first time I'd heard about it. So I thought, what would happen if you combined both of these ideas to make a universal orientation magnetic drink coaster? The design for this project was pretty simple. Make a hexagon about 3.5 inches flat to flat, then add 6 pockets for magnets as close to the edges as possible. Take two of these identical pieces and glue them together. The pockets were set with a diameter of 0.21 inches for magnets that were 5 millimeters across. The depth was set to be 0.105 inches. This would give the magnets just enough wiggle room to freely rotate. I also shaved about 20 thousandths of an inch from the center of the coasters so that if my wood stock was warped, it would take less pressure to force the edges to meet flush. The neodymium magnets, by the way, were sourced from eBay, 5 millimeters in diameter or just a hair over 3 sixteenths of an inch. They're a lot pricier than similar 5 millimeter magnet sets, but this particular item gave me a piece of information I valued a lot more as an engineer, the magnet grade, which was N42. Most cheap spherical magnets, especially those dangerously marketed as toys, use lower quality N35 stock or worse. For the coaster's material, I went with quarter inch Aspen. It was on sale at Lowe's for a couple bucks. Wasn't the flattest piece, but it was good enough. Because I was trying to cut a pocket in wood near the edge of my piece, I ran the risk of blowing out the hole. I needed a really sharp end mill to produce a small minimum wall thickness. Conveniently, I got my hands on some brand new 8th inch end mills from the Carbide 3D store. This particular set of end mills has a short and precise half inch length of cut, and two flutes with a moderate helix angle. Straight flutes might be better for wood, but sharpness is the most important factor here. Now the end mill itself plays an important role, but so does the cutting strategy. I cut my pockets first so that the material would be fully supported on all sides, then I cut the outside profile with more conservative settings to put less stress on the thin sections of the walls. After separating each hex tile half from my stock, I sanded off the wood fibers around the perimeter and roughly ground off the tabs. I'd clean them up later after both halves had been mated. I then popped in the magnets to make sure that they were free to rotate. These early tests were promising even though their magnetic attraction wasn't very strong. I smeared on a thin coat of wood glue around the edges and clamped my tiles together, making sure the wood grain on each half was going in the same direction. After letting the glue set, I sanded down each of the sides and broke all the hard edges on a piece of sandpaper. I made three prototypes to see how they interacted. Even though each of their individual magnetic attractions are very small, their ability to stick together increases substantially in a group. But I still wasn't happy with this coaster's design for two reasons. Number one, the attraction force wasn't high enough to reliably suspend one tile from another, which is probably the first thing people would do if you handed them a pair, so that wouldn't be very impressive. And two, it was needlessly thick. I'm gluing together two sheets of quarter inch wood to encapsulate a magnet with a diameter of about 0.2 inches. The extra material above and below the magnet means that the coasters won't stick well if you stack them on top of each other, plus they just take up more room. So for round two, I doubled up the magnets in addition to face milling my stock to 3 sixteenths of an inch before adding pockets. This basically doubles my machining time, but without space to set up a wood chop and buying a thickness planer, it's the best I can do. I also don't have a router table, but that's not stopping me from putting a 1 16th inch round over on each face. Future work on these coasters includes laser etching a design onto the top face and a coat or two of spray lacquer to finish. These coasters are meant to complement the rest of the board games and brews paraphernalia I'm putting together for my friend. Before I sign off, I'd like to make two quick comments to my viewers. Number one, you guys, my audience, are great, and I appreciate all the comments you send my way. That being said, I just realized that I received a couple messages through Facebook, which is probably the worst possible social network to reach me through. Unless we're already friends or have a mutual contact, your messages will be automatically sorted into a separate inbox which I don't normally see or check. So Twitter, YouTube, or even my antiquated website are all better ways of reaching me. Number two, in general, I don't make anything to sell. I enjoy making and trying new things too much to sit down and work out a production plan for something. Plus, the main purpose of this channel is to encourage other people to make their own things. If for some reason you don't have the means to produce something yourself, we might be able to work something out. But it's honestly more satisfying for me to see other people making and learning things than for me to make a few bucks. So with that out of the way, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with one of several projects in my backlog.